Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is Scott Jefferson. Welcome to episode four of Propeller Balancing uh, using the Pro Balancer 1015 Pro Balancer Sport model. Uh, today, like I said, we're going to be talking again. I'm Scott Jefferson, Regional Solutions Specialist, and I'm here today again with Josh Shively, who was actually, uh, uh, again, uh, helped us on our previously on our Cobra II prop balancing. Uh, the 1015, again, uh, one of the things uh, today. Uh, that we're going to be discussing. Understanding the basics of vibration today and uh, understanding the benefits of balancing. We're going to learn how to use, again, the Pro Balancer Sport uh, and Balance Your Propeller. And then we're going to do it again, like I said earlier, the live balance uh, on the simulator. Okay, understanding vibration. Today in this section, like I said, we're going to understand how to define vibration, explain why it occurs, how we measure it, and then how we correct the vibration problems. All uh, right, what is vibration? The unwanted, unproductive cyclic oscillation of the propeller and engine assembly about its rotational axis. As you can sort of see in the illustration there, the little red dot being the heavy spot. And one of the things I want to remind everybody, and I always do this every, every time I do a show presentation, is that not all noise and vibration is generated from an uh, imbalanced propeller. Uh, there can, I mean, there could be other things going on in the aircraft, uh, in the engine assembly, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if that is done, then you need to probably adhere to uh, uh, get a vibration spectrum survey, uh, something like that completed. Uh, that will be pinpoint more of what to define what the problem is. Again, if you'll notice here, when the weight's rotating, the propeller engine assembly is not quietly distributed. Again, resulting force takes pulls that red dot out into, like I said, toward a, a, a straight line. A good way to explain this, and I always say it again, one of the things I use for an example is that if you're, anybody here has washed clothes, put too, much, too many clothes on one side of the washer, you hear the washer banging on one side, you know, it sounds like it's going to come through the wall, hence, that, again, that same, same sort of scenario here. Again, how, we measure the, how do we measure vibration? Again, the basic elements of vibration include vibration sensor, a photo tack, and a balancer. The vibration sensor, of course, is the device that you use to pick up uh, the vibration. The phototac is your speed sensing device. And of course, the balancer is the computerized uh, device that actually, uh, uh, with the algorithms inside, that gives you the, the uh, solution. How do we measure vibration? Again, this is the vibration sensor you see on your screen. Again, it sends a small voltage when a mass compresses the piezoelectric uh, element. Well, a good way I always tell this, um, um, one of the things on this, the piezoelectric, anybody has a gas grill, when you press the button, it sends that little spark. Uh, same thing here. That's sort of, again, that's sort of a layman's terms of what, of, uh, of, of what the sensor is and how it operates. The measurement is made in G's, which is, again, equivalent gravities, measures acceleration, and then the balancer mathematically converts those into ips for balancing purposes. How do we measure except with uh, measure vibration? It's more sensitive. The sensor is more sensitive to higher frequencies, and it measures directly related to force of an imbalance. So basically, saying that whenever, like I said, the, the heavy spot goes up, again the sensor feels and sends that signal, electric signal through through the uh, through the sensor. The photo tag, again, which is included with your kit, emits a beam that's reflected uh, reflected from a piece of reflective tape on the installed on the back of your propeller. Again, the, again, it sends out a small red beam, and again, sends a signal back to the photo tack. That's how, and every time that reflective tape passes, it sends a signal back, and that's how it speeds, uh, senses the speed, RPM. Again, the, after the bouncer receives the vibration data from the sensor and the revolution data from the photo tack, again, the bouncer it computes the size of the vibration and then uh, location of the heavy spot. So it tells you basically how bad is the, how bad is the vibration, and where is it located, what, what, what angle. Okay, how do we correct the vibration problems? Improve manufacturing methods? Uh, you know, as I tell everybody, improving manufacturing methods would be great, uh, again, but probably not likely. Again, trying to get the OEMs to fix if there's an issue here and there, whether, uh, it, it, again, just not, not practical. Remove and replace defective components? Again, uh, that, again, costly. And so every time you have an imbalance, again, removing it, replacing it, again, not practical. Static propeller balance? The, uh, it probably, again, has to be done, needs to be done, especially if you're doing a new prop or getting a new prop on. You know, it's not bad. You know, send it to the shop, uh, prop shop, and have it statically balanced. And then perform a dynamic propeller balance. 
Again, one of the things, I'm going to go back to this real quick, when I, when I say to perform a dynamic propeller balance, anytime you take something stationary, which is how a static balance is done, and you put it on something that is, you know, revolves at a certain RPM, it changes the properties, uh, it's going to change the properties of that particular item. So I don't care what it is. It's sort of like when you put car tires on uh, your car. You have, they come from the manufacturer balance well, you know, to spec. Again, once you stick them on something that rotates, you take it, you get them balanced. Benefits of balancing. In this section, we're going to, again, point out the negative effects of vibration. These are pretty common. And then we're going to explain, you know, the benefits of balancing your propeller. Um, one of the things that if on that is that negative effects of vibration, and some of these, again, you probably run into in your shops or in your own personal plane. You get cracked exhaust stacks, sheet metal on the aircraft. Higher than, you know, leakage, any kind of oil leakage, prop oil leaks. Uh, again, light bulbs, uh, very common, you know, for they can continuously replacing light bulbs. Uh, and again, the most costly one probably is avionics. Again, uh, that is probably, that's probably on the next one. You failed avionics, I mean, everybody knows how much those cost now to put into aircraft. Again, uh, and also your, your buzz and deceit, numbness, complaints of discomfort, ride. Passion complaints and noise, and again, another one. Um, again, if, it's, uh, if you're a single user or individual user, again, you'll probably know, notice that yourself. It does smooth out a lot of the noise and stuff coming from an imbalanced propeller. Benefits of balancing. Okay, improves fuel efficiency uh, and flight performance. Uh, one of the things that uh, we did a prop balance job for a gentleman here locally on a demo, and it's probably on our, our website, um, but uh, he told us one of the things that... Uh, uh, after we balanced the propeller, and he had never, never, done, never had it done. Had a Cessna 172, again, uh, he's like, ah, oh, you know, don't, don't need it. And you hear that a lot, still. Uh, we balanced his propeller, and then when we took off, he was, uh, he was amazed at the amount of di additional horsepower he had performance at, at takeoff, just by balancing his propeller. It extends the service life, and li service life and airframe components. So, again, one of the economy, uh, economical uh, benefits of balancing your propeller, again, is extending that service life uh, and of all your avionics, of, of your aircraft, the airframe, the engine, et cetera, et cetera, because once you keep the vibration down, again, it'll just extend the lifetime of it. Comfort of riding. Benefits of balancing. Comfort. Uh, that's, again, a lot of the people, that's most of it. Um, again, it's just one of those things where you want a comfortable ride anytime you're spending any amount of time uh, no matter if you're in a car, aircraft, or what it is, you want a comfortable ride. All right, so balancing your propeller. In this section, we're going to cover when to balance your prop, an overview of the balancing process, equipment needed to complete the job, how to set up the equipment, the collection data, and making the adjustments. When to balance your prop. When you're bothered by a vibration in the cockpit. Or, again, you've had mechanical issues, vibration, that, that there's other things, you know, continuously having to replace stuff. When you notice cracks in airframe and components. And manufacturers recommend propeller balance. Again, when to balance your prop. Macaulay has a constant speed in turbine propellers. Uh, they have it in their service letter, uh, which is the 1989 AD4D uh, on July 20, 2001. Um, of course, uh, they actually, when vibration levels are greater than 0.8 ips, they recommend a prop balance. Again, most dynamic propeller balance uh, equipment manufacturers specify anywhere from 0.15 to 0.2 ips as being an acceptable level. Uh, but again, ASIS systems and forever, anything 0.07 ips or lower is noticeably smoother and actually to say it a lot of people, if you get down to 0.07 or, or lower, you physically can't feel the vibration. Required equipment. You're going to need, of course, on, and for this episode, the Pro Balancer Sport, you're going to need a photo tack. You're going to fit, measure some kind of you know, your speed and phase angle. Uh, you're going to, of course, the vibration sensor, a protractor, a gram weight scale, balance weights, and hand tools. Uh, this gives what you see on, the, on your screen. Gives a good uh, illustration of some of the things that come with the, with the kit. Uh, there's also approved references uh, for your for prop balancing, your airframe manual, your propeller manual, engine manual in some cases, uh, or any FAA approved guide to propeller balancing. 
as you'll see here on this uh, AEC three, uh, 2037E, uh, so there's two approved, uh, uh, two approved uh, FAA uh, methods uh, for balancing or guides. Of course, the ASA Systems Guide to Propeller Balancing being one of those. Um, it's always available on our website to download as well. Just uh, throwing that in there. You can go to our website under the technical library, and that, that document is always available. It comes in your kit, whether it's a Cobra 2 prop kit uh, or a 1015 kit. It comes with, I believe it comes with the 1015 kit. Uh, and it's also available online to download. Thank you, Josh. Mm -hmm. Step one. Okay, we're going to talk about inspect your propeller assembly. I've uh, heard a lot of horror stories about this. Uh, I mean, there's things where, uh, you know, they go out there and do a prop job and they find out there's something going on that actually there's a rag inside the spinner, water, something, trap, grease. Uh, those are things. So you just want to make sure your, your assembly and everything looks good. Uh, step two is make the analyzer batteries have enough charge to complete the job. Again, the, the Pro Balancer, uh, 1015 Pro Balancer Sport uses four AA batteries, uh, so easily replaced. You can buy the batteries, of course, anywhere uh, uh, at any store, basically, to, to keep a stock of those. Uh, step three, attach the vibration sensor. Uh, again, the most important. Getting set up for the job is one of the most, uh, probably the most time-consuming of anything. The actual job itself doesn't take long at all. Okay, the procedure. Always attach a vibration sensor near as possible to the forward-most point of the engine. So usually at 12 o'clock, again, at, at the far as forward facing down toward the shaft, you want to make sure it's not near a cylinder or an alternator or something like that. You want to make sure it's far forward, again, facing straight down toward the middle of the shaft uh, for the, uh, uh, to pick up the vibration. Because you don't want to pick up any resonating vibration from those other sources. Attach photo tack and reflective tape. Again, uh, if you'll see here on the, on the illustration, your photo tack is usually, you can offset a little bit, usually just to the right of the, uh, uh, of the analyzer, um, usually between 12 and 18 inches back, uh, facing the reflective tape. Again, that's uh, one of the things that, uh, again, the offset, there's a reason for the offset, and the way I've always been instructed is that it helps with the, the angle and the, the, uh, the way the photo tack beam shoots, so it doesn't reflect, uh, uh, so it gets a good, I guess, a reading. Again, 14 inches from the center of the shaft out, as you can read on this. Now, there's a reason, too. I hope somebody says why the, uh, you see the, um, let me go back here. The 3M brand, 7610 on the tape. Um, we've been around about 40 years. So, uh, ASUS, we've tried many different reflective tapes in the past. And the good thing is that with this reflective tape, we found that based on the speed and everything else, that it doesn't slip uh, some other, you know, less, you know other tapes. Have, you know, after it heats up, whatever starts sliding down the prop, this basically holds the best, uh, so it gives you a better result, and that's why we always recommend this brand. Attach the cables. All right, cables should be routed away from any rotating high temp components. You know, again, anything temperature-wise or cables. Secure the wires with ties or usually some kind of tape. Painters tape is sometimes good to use. I don't recommend using like uh, duct tape or anything like that. Uh, uh, for reasons being, um, I've heard some again stories where tape is taking some of the you know damage from the paint on the aircraft. So you just want to be careful when you're doing that. Okay, do not close doors, windows, do you know things like that uh, on the on the, the cables. Pretty uh, you think common sense, but what happens is that these cables send a, it's a sensitive data, right? So they're carrying a lot of sensitive uh, electric, electric pulses back. Again, any kind of uh, damage to those wires will affect the data coming in. So you want to make sure that, you know, you ease, if you have to run them through your window, just ease the window down on them, you know, just don't let them drop and slam on. Uh, same thing with your door or something, when you're running into the cockpit. Um, just make sure that uh, they are, again, just not damaged. Step six, acquiring the data and then reviewing the data. And we'll see all these steps here when we actually do the demo. We'll show, show you a live view uh, on the analyzer screen and a, a view of what we're doing on the actual balance wheel. Uh, when we get into the, the yeah. demo. And then, you know, step eight, of course, shutting down the engine. These are little screens that you'll see, like I said, on the analyzer here in a moment, momentarily when we do the simulation. Step nine, of course, install the first solution. Uh, again, remove all the weights, add the grams at the degrees. Uh, and of course, it has to split weight. Again, the, the actual simulation will show a lot of this. Uh, again, test weights can be placed underneath the spinner retention screws. Uh, it may be necessary to use a longer screw. What I tell people on this one, is that if you do have to use, when you're doing the test weights and stuff underneath the spinner, and you have to go to a longer top screw, 
uh, make sure that you calculate the weight of that longer screw. Again, uh, it's one of those things where it's adding, remember you're, you're getting something larger so it's going to be adding the weight. So you'll make sure that you weigh that screw along with uh, your washers uh, when you're putting your weight on. Acquiring the data is step 10. That tells your warm-up engine, next thing you can see on the screen here. Step 11, of course, reviewing the data. Step 12, install the solution. Here it gives, again, a, um, talking about permanent weights maybe installed under the flange or the, on the bulkhead. A lot of different models, since there's so many variations of, of, of aircraft uh, between uh, ring gear size, bulkhead size, uh, prompt, spinner, all that. Again, this is all sort of a, uh, gives you again, an idea. It's hard to give all those, uh, uh, again, you know, I guess uh, variances uh, that it's hard to give an exact when you're moving in. So uh, from that, I mean, that's pretty much, I know it's been sort of quick uh, trying to get this, so to get to the, sim the simulation. Um, again, any questions, uh, anybody wants any part of this, just let me know. Uh, we've got, actually, this is part of, of our dynamic propeller balancing presentation we do at shows. But uh, so if anybody needs uh, a copy of that, I'm always happy to send a copy of that. Get some great information. All right, well, from here we're going to get to doing the simulation. So I'm going to turn the analyzer on. All right, it's going to boot up. All right, at the beginning of the screen, of course, it's going to ask me for my engine horsepower and the balance RPM. For practice for the sim today, I'm actually going to put in, let's say, 125 horsepower. So if it was you and you, you just put in whatever your engine horsepower is on your aircraft. The reason why it's asking for a horsepower is it, it, the horsepower factors into the calculation for the test weight, the very first weight. Uh, there's, in the ACE's Guided Propeller Balancing, it actually gives you the formula that uh, we use to calculate that test weight. So if you uh, have any questions about that, I'd refer you back to that document. Yeah. Uh, so the test weight, again, that, that, I'm sorry, the, the horsepower, uh, it doesn't have to be 100% spot on. So if you give it the best guess, uh, if you don't have the document right in front of you that gives you this, the specs or if you don't know right away what the, the exact horsepower is, don't be concerned. Just give it um, uh, the best guess you can give as close as you can get uh, to it. Now, the next one down, uh, thank you, Josh. The next one down is going to be your balance RPM. Now, what I always tell people, is, and Josh gave me a good instruction earlier, I always tell people your cruise, your cruise RPM. Uh, Josh, as I said, said earlier, you know, whatever the, your aircraft operates at most of the, the majority of the time, again, which is going to be usually that cruise RPM. Mm -hmm. So, for again, for this simulation, I know on some of them it's going to be 2400, and it'll vary per aircraft. But for this simulation, I'm going to put in 1728. And then it's asked me, of course, to continue, press the check mark. And I was telling me, the analyzer's telling me to, again, to remove all trim weights, install my cables, the sensors, reflective tape, make sure everything. And what I always recommend is that you, you go ahead and do this up front. Um, you know, you get everything installed uh, prior to this part. Makes it a lot quicker and a lot easier. So with the 1015, this is a process you're going to have to do every time you use it. Uh, it. It always requires that you remove any previously installed balance uh, trim or dynamic balance weights, not your static weights that come from a certified propeller repair station or propeller shop, but your dynamic trim weights. Uh, those have to come off every time. So you're going to take this first run that we're going to perform is going to be considered a raw run. So it's going to be um, as the propeller is uh, without any balance weights on it at all. Uh, then we're going to move into a test weight. So the analyzer will take that reading, take that measurement, and then come back and provide you with a test weight. And then you'll go out and install that. So the analyzer is reminding you here to make sure that you remove that stuff ahead of time. And Scott made a great point. It's probably when you're installing all of your equipment up front. Uh, take a, take a, a picture of where the weights are and what they are. Make document, uh, note it down somewhere on a piece of paper of uh, how much the weights were uh, weighed and just set it aside just to have that in your back pocket. It's just, uh, uh, I'm one of those that like to document everything. So I want to make sure I have everything documented on what, what was where uh, before I even began. Hook all my equipment up, go ahead and remove those weights, and then move back to the balance process. All right, and now we've done all that. Now we're going to hit the check mark. Now it's looking for the cables and looking for everything that's connected. Again, most of the time when I have this at trade shows and stuff, Oshkosh and so forth, I don't have cables connected. So. This is probably actually until recently, farthest I've ever been in this t unit. So again, standing by for engine start. Contact. Josh. All 
All right, so we've got the engine up and going. So it's like I said, it tells you again, when the engine's normal operating temperature, you know, everything's good, we're all good. So we just tell you hit the, the check mark, we're okay. Now it's gonna start calculating. And it's looking for the RPM. Uh, it tells you not to disturb the power level, so throttle, just leave it alone until it validates RPM. Still looking for the vibration. Fire on the data. All right, now it's telling me vibration level is very rough. 0.52 ips at 279 degrees. Now it says retake data, yes or no. The reason why you might want to retake data if you got a wind gust of, of a certain over 40 knots or another aircraft came by, uh, you know, and again, might disturb the, 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 disturb the process. Uh, at that point, you could actually say yes and, and start over. But since we're all good here for the simulation, I'm going to hit the X. Okay, it tells me to retard the engine, cool down, and shut down. So if you notice, uh, you have the option at the review spot. We didn't change anything on the power level settings. We kept everything going exactly the way it was. So in the case that you had to retake data, you don't have to go through the process of firing everything back up, uh, advancing the throttles back up to where they're supposed to be, because sometimes that can be tricky, having to uh, maintain manifold pressure, checking uh, temps and everything. So at the review data screen, we're not retarding engine throttles at all, we're, we're waiting. So at this point, now we're happy with the data, I'm gonna go ahead and kill engines. And the analyzer, if you notice on the screen there, it's actually waiting for the prop to stop. Uh, you can see your RPM is dropping, and then it won't proceed any further as a safety measure uh, until the analyzer sees that there is no more um, movement on the prop. Okay. Now the analyzer actually says remove all weights. A reminder. So, yep, as a reminder, then add 19.1 grams at 9 degrees. Okay, so let me give you a little background on, on how we got this configured. Uh, I've got my vibration sensor installed at the 12 o'clock position just behind this, this disc uh, right about here. I've also got my photo tac uh, installed at the same location, at the 12 o'clock location, immediately behind uh, this disc. So both of those are co-located at 12 o'clock. Uh, with your 1015, uh, especially if you uh, sign up with this promo deal, you're going to get uh, this, this other balance ring. So this is a, uh, our larger protractor ring. Uh, one of the things, how you're going to use this is you're going to take note of your rotation. All right? You notice your, your rotation on your arrow. This ring, uh, this disc actually rotates uh, clockwise, and you'll notice that my phase angle on this marking on this uh, ring increases counterclockwise. Uh, that's a standard rule in balancing. Your phase angle always uh, increases opposite the direction of rotation. Now, how do I know where to start my phasing from? Uh, with the 1015, you're going to take uh, your propeller and you're going to rotate it around to where your reflective tape lines up with your photo tack. So let me give me just a second to find that. All right. So in that location now, I've, I've lined up my photo tack and my reflective tape. My 360 or my zero now lines up with wherever I have my vibration sensor installed. So again, let me repeat that. With the 1015, you're going to line up your reflective tape with your photo tack and then your zero or your 360 will be, uh, will, will be lined up with wherever your vibration sensor is installed, okay? So at this point, this is where we're gonna uh, start counting our phasing from. Uh, Scott said that this is gonna ask for about 19 grams. Uh, with this being just a little plexiglass wheel, uh, that's gonna be way too much weight for this little wheel. So um, at this point, I'm gonna put a reduced amount of weight on there. So I'm gonna only gonna put 1.4 grams uh, up here around my, uh, at my 360. And Scott's gonna actually tell the analyzer what I did. So uh, same thing, it's garbage in, garbage out. If you lie to the analyzer, the analyzer's gonna lie back to you. If you don't feel comfortable with what, you're, uh, what, what the analyzer is asking you to do on this first run for this test weight, that's okay. As long as you put enough weight on at, uh, at, the, at a closer phase angle to what the analyzer is asking for, you're just looking at putting a known amount of weight at a known location to induce a measurable change. That's all we're looking for. This is not actually a balanced solution. So this first uh, weight application could actually make your vibration levels go up. It could bring them down. 
Okay, so don't freak out if you see your vibe levels go up. This is just a test weight. We're looking to make a measurable change. Oh. So I've put 1.4 grams mm -hmm. at zero degrees. And as you can see here, there's my 360 or zero. I've installed my 1.4 uh, grams. Uh, I'm gonna pull the ring away and go back to Scott. Thank you, Josh. So I put the information in that Josh just provided, the 1.4 grams and also the install position at zero. Hit the check mark. Standing by for engine start. Contact. Again, it's asking you to just wait till it gets the normal procedure, the operating uh, uh, temperature, pressure. Hit OK. Again, advanced. It's looking for the, it's doing uh, the, uh, the calculations now, looking for the RPM and the vibration. Again, tells you not to mess with the power level. Validating data and acquiring the data. Again, still comes up vibration level rough, 0.33 ips at 298 degrees. Again, gives me the option to retake the data if I want to for any other unknown reason. I'm gonna say no, hit the X. Tells me to turn the engine down or shut it down, sorry. Uh, now, it's telling me again to remove all my weights, so it's asking me to remove the test weights. That's a key point right there. Anytime the analyzer comes in and, provide, and gives you a solution, that solution is in replacement of whatever else you had put on before. So, in this case, I'm going to remove what I installed previously. I'm going to take my 1.4 grams off, and now the new solution was what? It's the new solution is 3 grams at 27 degrees. Okay. So if you notice, I can't put. Uh, I don't have. I don't have the option of putting anything anything at that uh, 20 degree mark or 20. What was it? It was uh, 27 degrees. 27 degrees. Uh, so you have the option on the screen to split weights. Uh, so Scott's going to say yes. We're going to split weight. It'll now ask you for what are the phase angles that it can put weight in. I have the option of 15 and 30. So those are the two that are on the either side of the desired phase angle of where it's wanting the weight to install. So Scott's going to enter in 15 degrees and 30 degrees. Done that. All right. And then you hit your check mark for OK. Then it's going to say, OK, suggested. The analyzer is going to give you the suggested weight at the 15 degree is 0.7 grams. Okay, so now I don't have uh, the weights that I have available to me, I can't get to 0.7. That's okay. Again, tell the analyzer what you have. So I'm gonna go at my 15 degree uh, spot, I'm gonna put on as close as I can get with the weights that I have available uh, to that 0.7. What I have is actually 0.5 grams. So I'm gonna put my 0.5 uh, gram weight on at the 15 degree uh, spot. Okay. Scott's gonna make that notation in the analyzer. Hit check. And I put that oh. on. Now the analyzer then gives you a warning. Installed weight differs from the suggested amount by a certain percentage. But again, it's what we have. So from here on, we're still gonna hit yes to continue. Check mark. Now it's giving me a suggested weight, Josh, of 2.4 grams at the 30 degree mark. Okay, so I can do 2.5. So I've got my 2.5 gram uh, weight that's going to go on. Again, these are such small weights because this is just a plexiglass ring. Uh, so your, your weights are obviously going to be a lot larger uh, than what we're dealing with here because again, just a little plexiglass wheel. So I was able to install 2.5 grams uh, on the, uh, uh, the ring. Scott entered that in. Yep. And Hit the check mark. We're okay. Now it's asking me for, of course, the engine start. Contact. Again, when the engine's at normal operating temperature and pressure, again, just when you can hit your check mark, we're good. Again, analyzer is computing, looking for the vibration and the RPM.
Okay, vibration level good, 0 0.05 ips at 282 degrees. Again, it gives me the option to retake data. Don't need to. 0 0.05 ips is very good. Below I'd, point. I'd highly recommend for a lot of the guys, if, if you get to 0 0.07 or lower, stop. You're good. Uh, don't try to continue moving forward because you, you could end up uh, chasing your tail. And uh, as Scott mentioned earlier in the presentation, anything below 0 0.07, it's not noticeable in the cockpit. It's not noticeable in the controls. Uh, you're good. Uh, so when you get to 0 0.07 or lower, just stop, okay? Now the analyzer, of course, says asking me to continue to balance. I want to say no because we're good. Again, then it tells you, like I said, to t turn the engine off. Again, telling you if you wait for the shutdown now, it says place final weights at of 0.5 grams at 15 degrees, 2.5 grams at 30 degrees, and perform a verification run. This, what this is asking us to do is if we're, it, the analyzer is assuming you're doing the weights on a, uh, uh, the spinner retention screws on the outside, this is not going to be the permanent weight location. Uh, so it's going to tell you to do that. At that point, uh, if you need to move the weight down onto the bulkhead, I'd recommend going to the ACES Guided Propeller Balancing. And on that, uh, in that document, uh, there's a chart uh, there that will walk you through the process of doing the weight calculator of moving the weights down onto the spinner bulkhead. So reference back to that document. Uh, also, just kind of a, a promo pushing forward onto, on a higher analyzer on the Cobra 2 models, this is actually, that whole formula and whole process is actually built into the analyzer, so you'll be able to do that right from the analyzer itself uh, on the Cobra 2 models. 1015, just go back to the documentation and it'll walk you through that process as well. Now it just says again to perform a verification run. Of course, hit the check to continue. Standing by for engine start. Yeah, this is just assuming we've moved our weights down. Of course, I don't have that option on this on this disc uh, to move it down. So at this point, you're going to run through and just make sure that everything is good, everything uh, stayed the same, or, or within the balancing pro uh, balancing range. Okay, so we're at standard or, uh, operating pressure and temperature. One of the nice things about the 1015 is, is, is about this point here, uh, once you tell it that everything is good, uh, that, that you've got your engine up to speed and all temps and everything is uh, are okay, and you hit that check mark, everything else is automated. So the whole process of, of going through, you, there's no more user input that's needed until you get to the end where you're reviewing the data. So there's no more having to say, okay, well, I'm at my engine speed, okay, uh, push a button. Um, all right, well now, Not I'm ready to acquire data acquire data. Okay, I'm, ne I'm ready to, I'm, I'm done acquiring data, hit a button. You don't have to do that with the 1015. It's all automated to try to take as much um, uh, of that human error out of it as possible. So now Joshua says job complete, 0 0.05 ips, and gives you a degree of where that is. So we're good. At this point, you can actually shut down and turn the analyzer off. You're done. Good to go. All right, uh, again, that's, that's, that's what it said. It, you, uh, you've successfully now balanced your propeller, got the vibrations down to point below, again, the point zero 0.07 that we always recommend. Uh, and, you sh again, should increase your eco fuel economy, performance, increase the performance of your aircraft. Again, and it'll save you money on the long run just by, you know, saving you the vibration damage from other things. One of the things I did want to point out is that vibration, as well, resonates through other components in your engine. So, I mean, you're, anything that's turning, eventually vibration will move to those components and again cause again an imbalance in those. So it's, that's why we try to stress uh, very much that you actually balance your propeller, uh, have it looked at um, anytime you notice any kind of vibration uh, uh, issue. Again. Hey Josh. Yeah. Dave wants to know, protractor to tape, does the prop really need to be rotated to the vibe sensor? No. So uh, if, if you remember what I said there uh, on the 1015, you need to align your tack event so wherever the the um, reflective tape is in line with the photo tack at that point your zero is now lined up with your wherever your vibration sensor is installed so that's how the operation on the 1015 works and how you use this pro, uh, protractor wing, ring line your reflective tape up with your photo tack and then you your zero or your 360 is wherever the vibration sensor is uh, that's different than sometimes on like the Cobra 2 when you uh, you can change those settings from relative to sensor or relative to tape. On the 1015, it's always relative to sensor, so you're going to have to align your tack event, 
uh, rotate your propeller until you align your tack event, and then your zero or your 360 is in line with wherever your vibration sensor is. Uh, good question. Any other questions that you all may have, you, again, you can contact us at support at asysystems.com or also sales at asysystems.com. Again, we have a couple again. Uh, oh, I've got another question. Yeah, one more question. Um, say you just want to see what your prop is before you do anything. Can you just run it as it flies in for a baseline as to whether it needs balancing at all? Absolutely. You, you, at that point, you wouldn't have to uh, remove any weights or anything. You just start it like you would normally start a, a balance job, uh, run it up. Now, with the 1015, you have to keep in mind that if it does need balancing, you will have to start a new job. So you'll hit that little button in the upper right hand corner of the screen, the reboot button, and start a new job. Then remove all those previously installed balance weights and go from there. But if you just want to do a quick check, a quick uh, uh, verification check, yeah, no problem. Hook the vibration sensor up, hook the, the tack source up, and uh, start up and run. And get you, get you uh, at that review data screen, uh, which Scott was showing you. Uh, that you could retake the data. At that point, it'll give you your, your IPS and your phase um, reading on the screen. Good. Thank Good you, question. John. Any more questions? Uh, again, feel free. Like I said, those email addresses I gave you, uh, or you can dial the 865-671-2003, uh, provide you any answers that we may ha be able to provide. Again, appreciate you all very much, again, for joining us. Uh, again, please give us a call, 865-671-2003. Thank you.